Hey, how's it going, everybody? Thanks for joining in. I hope you liked that that video I had. Uh, looks like we'll have some some more people jumping in right after that video ends. But uh, real quick, what we're going to be doing on this is I have this clear coated uh, with a pearl white. You can see that how how nice that looks. Uh, it's clear coated. Clear coated it earlier this morning. Uh, the plan is on this particular panel, what we'll be doing is a, an American flag design. Um, we'll be using a candy, couple of different candy colors over this pearl, which basically is just transparent colors that we'll, we'll be making the design. Um, and then uh, this sparkle will still show through. So I'll kind of show you how to do that. We're going to do the, the lines down the middle here, the flag part. And then we'll be doing the blue on the outsides with the... <laughs> the stars I have cut out right here. So I just cut those out on the Cricut Maker 3. Um, when, when, when you buy a Cricut Maker 3, it comes with a program called the, I think it's called Design Space, if I'm not mistaken. And this was in the, um, it was one of their uh, shapes that they had in there. So it's pretty easy. All I did was just click on one of their existing shapes, uh, put it in and uh, line them all out and cut them. So. I'll be using those on both sides coming down. So it'll be white and blue, um, both sides this way. And then we'll have the flag pattern going in there. And once again, this will be all done in candy paint. Um, that way we'll be able to still see all of this sparkle. So some of it will be left white. Uh, some of it will go blue and some of it will go candy red. So pretty easy. Um, uh, one thing is I haven't really done this before. Like I've, I've done American flags. The method I'm going to be using here is going to be a little bit different. Um, I feel like it'll work better and be faster, but who knows? Could things could still go wrong, and maybe it won't look as great as it should. But um, but I have a good feeling about this one, so I think I think we'll do good. But it uh, looks like we have Larry Killer Capricorn again, Matt Camp, Michael. We got Australia in the house. Appreciate you guys joining in. Poland, we got Poland. Right on, man. So I'm using a 600 grit sanding sponge from Limeline. And I'm just going to scuff this up. That way that paint has something to stick to. Because if we try to paint right over the top of this gloss clear coat, the paint's just not going to stick. Have the damn spinners come in yet? Yes, they have. They're up for sale. The... Uh, He's speaking of the one inch spinners. I think I have one around here laying somewhere, but oh, there we go. Yeah. So these are back in stock uh, with a 5,000 grit pad. Limited green, so get them all the last. Should we get our edges here? Okay. We knocked all the gloss off of that. Looks good. We didn't burn through. That's great. Uh, I think the spinners are 49 bucks. Free shipping on Amazon. Yeah, right on. What did he win? The what? helmet? Yeah, yeah, he won. Mm -hmm. Well, that was, that worked out great. Get that on Christmas Eve. Yeah. Okay, I got all the sanding residue cleaned off there. Okay, so we're gonna grab some of the uh, 16th inch, the thinnest tape uh, that we have. What I'm gonna do is, once again, I'm just gonna kind of follow this line right here on both sides. That's how we're gonna break this thing up.
just gonna grab a piece of duct tape real quick and we're gonna tape this thing down. There we go. I'll stay put. Okay, so uh, uh, let me straighten this one out a little bit. Yeah, it'll. They'll, they're all going to be. Uh, they're all going to come here. It's finished. Yeah, that'll automatically. People will drop in right after that. Uh, so yeah, once again, we'll be in the, the flag design down the center. So we have we have the stars here going on both sides. Have them plotted out, and then I do have my my reference uh, paper right here. So. I'm basically I'm using this printout um, of American flag waving. That way I can kind of see, um, kind of see exactly what's what's going on, like uh, you know where I should run my tape line. So basically, this is just reference. You could also tape up the center of this, um, put some carbon paper on the back or some pencil, and then you could, you know, outline the design and then cut it out of tape. You can do it that way too. But uh, like I said, this way I'm going to go ahead and use the 16th inch. And um, we're going to go ahead and mask up everything that's white. And then we're going to leave the red stripes. So it might be just a little bit confusing. I might even be a little confused myself here and there. But um, we'll definitely get through it. All right. I'm going to start out by running this over here as reference. So I'm gonna run these lines right here. So I have this line here and I have this line, and then that's probably all we're gonna get. We're not gonna get all the way through because it's, it's not very thick right there. Um, so we're gonna try to run two lines similar to what we got going on here. And then um, that way we can see this white kind of lines up with this white up here. And then we'll also add the drop shadows when we're all done. So that's what we're gonna be doing first So these two lines. Real quick, I'm just gonna mask off these edges now rather than later. Someone's asking what you think about uh, portable airbrushes and their the batter, battery powered ones. Uh, the one that I had, it was uh, it was okay. It didn't last very long. I think it lasts like three months or so. Uh, the problem is the airbrush usually isn't of a quality that you want. Uh, seems like the air supply works. Also, I tried to plug in my Iwata into the small battery that it comes with, and it wouldn't work. It wouldn't. It wouldn't run my Iwata, which I was a little bit disappointed about that. Because I was thinking I'd just be able to change the that air tank, that battery-powered air tank, uh, put it on my Iwata, and it didn't end up working out. For some reason, it didn't let the air pass through. But uh, I would probably still buy a Neo. I would go with a Neo and a cheap little compressor over that portable unit. Okay, once again, take a look at that. Grab our tape here.
couple people just said they got lime line for Christmas. It was oh, pretty yeah, cool right for on. a present, they said. And then maybe we'll run this one. We'll run this one right here. Okay, so we got the two vertical lines. We got this one right here, which is that line. And we have this one right here, which is kind of something similar to this. Not exactly, but it's good enough. Um, so basically, we're going to have three different layers where it kind of rolls under. Um, this one kind of rolls over the top, it looks like. And then this one kind of comes up underneath, which rolls over this last one right here. I'm gonna start right here in the corner. And I'm gonna come down, kind of make it wave. I'm just kind of mimicking what I see in my reference. That looks good. Okay, and this is where I'm going to determine my thickness of the line. I think I'll go about, I think we'll go about that thick right there. Looks about right. I'm going to follow, you know, kind of the same shape that I'm doing right there. So you see, I kind of follow that. Try that one more time. There we go. Someone just asking, what's your opinion on the SATA airbrush? Uh, um, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. That is, it's held like a, a, a full size gun. What's oh, with, on it? with a, like a trigger, I'm guessing? Um, maybe. Yeah, if it has the trigger style, like down at the bottom, like this one. Uh, <laughs> if it's like that, then. Uh, uh, yeah, they work. Uh, they work pretty good. Um, if you ever plan on doing any serious detail, like uh, mural work or anything like that, you're probably going to have a hard time because the the action to pull the trigger is it's harder to control in small amounts than it is with just your finger pulling back. You know what I mean? You have you're pulling down and pulling back just a little bit. You're able just to kind of rock that trigger. Trying to rock a whole finger and aim it, it's uh, its a little tough, but so it all kind of depends on what you plan on doing with it, you know? You can definitely make it work though. I know a lot of people will side that way when they buy an airbrush just because they're used to a regular gun, uh, which is fine. I think uh, you're better off 
you know, learning the the airbrush action of a of a regular airbrush with a button button type, and uh, using that if you plan on doing anything of like serious detail. Someone asked, um, what's the best clear with no dye back? Um, before I started using my own brand of clear coat, uh, I was using finish line that worked good. Um, that was by Sherwin Williams, I think. And I think a, a couple other, uh, local kind of branded clear coats I've used to, which I think they're all kind of the same company. Uh, but I would say uh, finish line would be, is it finished? I think it's finish line. Huh. Sherwin Williams, there's a lower line from my Sherwin Williams that works really good. I think it's like 125 bucks a, a gallon kit. I'm gonna do one more right here and we're gonna have this middle section just about taped up. Okay, it looks like we're gonna need another, another little small one right here. That's a little too fat right there. Uh, then someone just asked, what film do you recommend for cutting stencils on the Cricut? Everything I use is way too sticky. Uh, I use the Oracle mask. It's the uh, non-permanent masking, removable masking from Oracle. You can get it in any color, kind of colors and stuff like that. But uh, I think if you look on Amazon, you'd find it there. And then someone said, what's the affordable small airbrush called on your site? At and does it come with a compressor or do I have to get a separate one? A separate compressor? Well, if it's a portable, that portable one with the little battery on the bottom, um, you don't need a compressor with that one. But, but once again, it's, it's not as good as um, like you would see like a, a studio, like a Iwata studio. That's the one I use. I think they're like 350 bucks, but they're just a little 110 plug-in um on-demand kind of unit okay we're gonna go ahead and take a look back at our reference here okay so once again we have that line and then you can see the the other ones are kind of coming out uh it, like just see how this one kind of comes out of the red right here you know so that's what we're gonna do we're not gonna necessarily line all these up but we're gonna come out of here and do the same kind of thing kind of roll these around There we go. So you get a nice wave to it, just like that. And then, you know, these ones I'll probably do a little bit bigger. Or, uh, no, I'll do these same size. If this was out in front, I'd probably do it a little bit bigger. But to show some, some depth of it kind of coming up. But this is actually wrapping up over the top. This is coming out from underneath. Someone asked, what size compressor is needed to run paint gun for base coat and clear? You want to use a, a two-stage compressor, uh, one that has the double pumps on it. Uh, you could get away with a smaller compressor, too, like one just a single pump. Um, 
uh, with a gun. It all kind of depends on what you're painting. If you're painting motorcycle parts, you get away with a smaller compressor. If you're trying to sand using a DA sander or trying to polish using some kind of pneumatic tools, that's where you're going to run into the problem is those are going to drain a lot of air. Um, so if you plan on using any pneumatic tools like uh, DA sander, which is usually pretty necessary when it comes to auto body and custom painting. Uh, so you're going to want to that in mind when you're buying an air compressor because you're going to need that extra capacity in order to run that equipment. But yeah, the to answer that question is you need a uh, two stage, two stage pump. Trim these up right here. Let's see here. Someone just asked, what kind of tape do you like, paper or vinyl? Uh, I prefer vinyl for sure. It gives it a crisper edge. You can get away with paper tape if you're just doing flake because you, can, you can't really tell, like, because it's so flaky, you can't really tell if the line's not, uh, oops, if the line's not perfect. So that's why I like to use vinyl because it's always a crisp, crisp paint edge right there. Uh oh, I lost the line. Okay, so I got the, I don't have to worry about those. So I got these kind of lined up here. Uh, we'll figure out what's gonna stay white and what's gonna go red here in a minute. But we're gonna go ahead and finish up just this little section right here. Bless you. Okay, trim these inside pieces. All right, there we go. Okay. Next step, let's tape off my fingers. Okay, next step is we need to uh, trim up this these couple of lines that we have right here. So we're gonna have to determine um, what's gonna go red and what's going to stay white. Um, so what we'll go ahead and do is, um, everyone that's going to, so we can kind of have a, a visual here. Everyone that's gonna go white, which is every other one, we'll go ahead and stick a little piece of masking tape on each one. We won't mask them all the way up, but we will need to mask them up. But so kind of give us an idea until then. So we'll, we'll do, let's see here. We'll go ahead and do the white right here. It's going to kind of step down a little bit from the 
the other side right there. Every other one. Okay, everywhere where there's white, we want to make sure that um, we're, we're keeping the masking tape. Um, but where there's red, we're going to want to have to trim it. So this is red and this is red. If we leave this line in here, it's going to leave a white line. So we're going to need to trim everything where the red connects the red. So there's that one. We got red here. We got red here. This is about, I about made a mistake. That needs to stay white and that needs to stay white. Oh, I'm, I'm wrong here. That stays white. This goes red. Told you I'd get myself confused. It said bottom, left. bottom left. Every other one. But wait, bottom left. Right here. Not seeing it, but not seeing it. So we, so we're at white here, we're at red here and here. So these are the two areas. It looks like we're gonna have to fix that a little bit. These are the two areas that we need to trim. So we're gonna trim there, there. It looks like I already have it cut. I'll go ahead and fix that little space we have right there once we mask it up. Okay, so we have two whites here. We have the red connecting here and here. So once again, we will cut there, cut there. White, white, red's here. Let's see here, we got red. The way this is working is might be some of you might be confused. The white, the lines are going to be where the white is. So the whites are going to be part, the lines are going to be part of this white. These lines are going to be part of this white. The red's going to be what you can see right there. So maybe that'll make more sense. Red here. And. Okay, that looks all right. No problem so far. We got red here, red here. And then we got red here and red here. So we're gonna just trim that. We got a red here. That's not going to really intersect with anything. Um, that's just kind of splitting the difference in there. That should be fine. And then we got a red here that's connecting to a red here. So there, there. Okay. 
yeah, that looks uh, like that's definitely going to work, I think. All right, I'm going to go ahead and finish up masking this up. So we're going to mask up all of the white. Right here. Oh, that's the top right. What's this? Are they talking about that right there? Here we go. Huh. Why do I not see that? Do you see it? We got red here. Uh, I'm going to end up putting a line up through all the way through this. Maybe that's it's a little confusing. I think I got it right. Well, if I'm wrong, we'll find out. Like I said, this is the first time I've done it this way. I'm expecting it to turn out. Um, from what I know, it's going to turn out. But I've been wrong before. But we're just masking off everything that's going to stay that that pearl white hmm. yeah still not seeing it it could be wrong though Find out, uh. said i'm having adhesion problems spraying on clear that hardened a week ago sanded with 600 should i use a different grit when it's hardened clear wow um well it's probably that might not be your issue um you could have other issues the 600 grit is what you're going to want to use i wouldn't use anything more aggressive than that you could you could possibly use 400 but i don't think that's where your problem is um uh, if you're if you're uh, if your paint's peeling, there's a good chance you're, you may be over applying the paint too fast. You might be putting too much paint on at once, or just too much paint on altogether. That's one that's one way. Like if you say like you would put a whole bunch of candy over this, and it, who knows, it might happen to us tonight. Put too much candy on it, and it bridges over the clear too much or over the tape too much um creating like a bridge and then it just has a hard time with that much material on it to make a crisp line so you want to make sure you keep your tape as thin as uh your paint as thin as possible especially when you're taking stuff No. 
golf triangle on the left. Now they think about that one triangle that's right there by I'm not sure me. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> Try to figure it out. If we make a mistake, we're gonna know it. Someone could please turn off the background music. Uh, you can turn it down to six. There you go. You can turn it down to six as well. There. Change the song and yeah. Down. We're not going to be in complete silence here. Okay, we're getting closer here. That looks good. Someone says, if you look at the second rib, you'll see that you'll have a white line when you remove the cake. Hmm. Not seeing it. Still. You seeing it, babe? Maybe here? Is this what? Uh, yeah, yeah. Is that what he's Is talking that about, that red, little guy? Right? White, red, white that this one right here yeah you're right that's maybe what i can only thing i can see that is right that is i suck at it. being i am not artistic let's see let's see do we find it can we do it <laughs> yeah i think we got it let's see I'm waiting for him to respond it was right in front of our face the whole time it took me to stand up to come over there, and then I was like, oh, <laughs> I wait, I think all. I see it. <laughs> and I'm the guy in charge. What the hell? Okay, a couple more here. <laughs> see this line right here? That's not good. Yeah, got it, they said. Oh, we got it? All right. <laughs> oh, yeah, Larry wants to know what my German beer of the week is. Well, it's a funny name. It's called a wiener lager. <laughs> Serious? Go ahead. All right, here it is. It is wiener. It is wiener. I guess that's what I'm drinking. 5.6%. Is that, is that wiener in German? German wiener? Well, it's a German beer, so yeah. Then next up after that one is this, I think it's a, like an Amber Bach. 
It's a 6.3%. We'll be good. 6.3. Mm -hmm. See a couple spots here I missed. There we go. Yay, everybody's cheering that we got it. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, he's going to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was so good. <laughs> that would have sucked, too, really, because um, if I would have painted the red since we're doing a candy red, uh, I would have probably found it after the fact, and then can't really put candy red on top of it to cover it. It would have a different shade. Someone says, Wiener equals Vienna in German. Oh, it does? Oh, okay. So Vienna is still wiener, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, sausage, like right? Vienna sausages, is that right? Yep. Cheers. Yes. Okay, that was my last one. I just got to double check to make sure that uh everything oh right here what's this okay it looks like a little bit right here just a little bit Definitely with red, you want to be really careful with overspray. You want to double check all your masking. A little bit right there. Push your tape down. Someone said, what time limit do you have after sanding clear to lay down graphics? Um, after you sand the clear, you don't really, oh, well, you do kind of have a, um, a window, I guess, you know, you, there's no time limit to when you could start. I mean, after you sand it, you clean it, you can go for it. But, um, when you, when you scuff up the surface, the scratches that you put in it after a while, the clear coat will, I guess the best way I can say it is it kind of self heals and it won't have the exact grit if you sanded it a week ago rather than if you sanded it like five minutes ago. It's just going to kind of like, it's not going to be as aggressive to stick to, I guess. So you would, uh, if you let, if you sanded it and you waited longer than a week, scuff it up again with some Scotch-Brite or some 600 grit, and that'll get you back uh, ready to spray again. Someone said lower left square has a piece that needs to cut out. Lower left. Okay, this is my left. Oh, there is right there. Yeah, I say I can see it. Ah. <laughs> Come on. Almost missed it. That looks better. Yeah, I don't, yeah, this could have been, this could have been up here. Um, it doesn't need to be, you know, um, it just doesn't need to be. <laughs> it looks just fine like that. But yeah, I do realize that that could have been up here and that, that line could have been there. Um, I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm, um, I think it's going to look fine. So I left it. I could be wrong though. But I, uh, I'm not going to fix that one. I like it. Okay, so everything we have here is that we have exposed is going to go red, candy red. I don't really pinstripe now. If I do pinstripe, it'd be with a brush. Okay, what do we got here? 
I even practice pin tripping. That's hard. Hard. It's tricky. Let me make sure I don't have a red over here. That's this one. Okay, we're going with this one then. It's a little bit of an orange tint. Huh. All right, I'm gonna take some candy concentrate. This is a red orange. That's all I have. So it's gonna be kind of an orange tint. I'm okay with it. Please, again. Oh shit, I just drew, almost dripped. Whoa. Whoa. This is not the one to, to look at that. Look how close that was. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it didn't do it. Okay. Now this is just concentrate. Um, All right, now that I messed everything up. Okay, I'm gonna, so I have the candy red in there, the concentrate. I'm gonna go ahead and pour in about a th three to one mixture of clear base coat. Someone said, anyone cutting in uh, or tuning in late, he didn't cut himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and cover that up. <laughs> We're gonna forget I haven't made that mistake. See how easy it is to fix the mistake. Now it's gone. What happened there? Nothing. I can't even tell. I don't know what you're talking about. I like magic. Okay, I threw um, some about 50% uh, reducer, urethane reducer in with this. I'm going to keep seeing the top left has to be fixed. We'll figure it out after you paint it. Oh, right there. I don't think so. I don't think so. That comes right out of there. Yeah, that comes right out of the top right there. Doesn't dip down anymore. You know, if we do something wrong, we're going to learn something. And these panels don't mean, oh, look how orange that is. Whatever. We're going with it. It's red orange, but, um, Looks a little more orange than red. All right, so I'm using a, once again, an Iwata Neo. Uh, 75 bucks. Free shipping on Amazon. No. I gotta get it in the camera though. Yeah, that's definitely on the orange side. But we're gonna live with it. We're gonna go for it. Let's see here. We got a little.
Hold on, I got a problem with my airbrush here. Let's get it cleaned out. Someone, um, someone asked, um, that's Intercoat Clear with candy, right? Yes. Intercoat Clear, clear base coat, binder, whatever you want to call it. going to be a rustic American flag. Someone said, what's the fix to get rid of the bladder? On candies, you really can't. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit on the orange side. I'll kind of get it a little more saturated. pricey in California. Oh yeah, I bet. Someone asked, mixing candy concentrate with clear base coat allows less buildup at tape lines, right? Quicker coverage? Uh, not Well, not necessarily. I mean, the more base that you put in it, the, the less of intense the color is going to be and the more you got to lay down. Um, but the more candy concentrate, you, know, you can, oh, I missed a little bit right there. Um, the candy concentrate, uh, you can mix them a little more potent, which is fine, but you got to make sure you have enough binder clear base coat in there, um, to make it stick still. So you don't want to, you don't want to overload it with too much of the candy concentrate either, you know? the fine balance but you can see how transparent this color is because you can still see the sparkle underneath the uh the sparkle of the the pearl white base coat now this base coat has been clear coated so it's going to allow us to do some things like scratch back some uh and erase some stitching which is pretty cool so make sure you stick around to the end because i'm going to show you how to um kind of scratch back some some details and the reason why we're able to do that is because this has been this panel has been clear coated after the base coat was applied so that's going to allow us a little bit of a barrier uh, to be able to remove some paint and certain methods to expose the, the white color again Someone asked if this is the the new gun or the older one with issues. The uh, the airbrush. Yeah. This is the new one, but it's still uh, it needs to be cleaned again. <laughs> it would. Watch how straight these lines get. Okay. Do you need a little drink? Oh, sure. There we go. Good wiener? Mm. No. This is not good wiener. <laughs> Must be a female in here. Ugh. The worst wiener I ever had. Well, I hope so. Hmm. 
me hit this one more time to make it a little more red because this is a a red orange uh, candy that I'm putting on here. So the more coats you do, we could literally make this red or pretty close to it if we saturated it enough. But uh, we really don't want to build this up too much because we don't want to have problems uh, with adhesion. Like somebody was talking earlier, this might have been the problem that he's having is if you say you were to hit this with a spray gun, so you, you put the same color in a spray gun, spray it with a spray gun. That's fine. That would work. The problem is when you're spraying it with a spray gun, you're putting on so much material so fast and it's so wet that um, it builds up over the tape lines. And then when you go to pull the tape lines, it's going to try to peel the rest of it with it. And if it's not connected and hooked to it really tight, it's just going to release from it. And then you got, and it's going to peel. So I don't know. Maybe it'll happen here. We'll see. Probably not. But uh, we will find out. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull. Let's see. Where are we at here? Okay, we're good. Oh, what happened? Oh, yeah. All right, so that's all it takes. Since we applied it with an airbrush, um, you really don't need to wait too long. It's pretty much already dry. I do want to keep this line though. A little bit of overspray there. I can take care of that. Yeah, especially when you're pulling tape. Uh, but I like to wear gloves. It keeps everything clean. Um, I'm used to. I'm just really used to it. I probably would have paint all over my hands too right now if it wasn't for the gloves. But it's not a. It's not an easy thing to learn to do. Wear gloves all the time. that one yeah the tape removal blade over there oh right here yeah. I like to use these little blades as plastic removal blades that way you're not cutting into the the paint at all when doing these uh, trying to pull these little small tape details Looks like I'm gonna retape. That's all messed up. I'm gonna go ahead and retape these edges once I have this pulled. Oh, that looks good right there. Yeah, tape removal blades, so that way you can... I'm literally digging in here to get that, that tape off and it's not going to harm the paint underneath like a regular blade would do. Ask if you're gonna 
Mm, not on this one. I'm going to do some stars and some uh, some other designs on the sides. But yeah, that would that would look nice on here though for sure. Just not on this one. Uh, I think on the next one I'm going to do leaf though. Oh, a little overspray there. Or underspray. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Nine ninety nine free shipping. Five blades will last you a lifetime if you don't lose them. Oh, I didn't want to peel that one. That's okay. Staying. No, they don't cut. Nope, they're just for peeling the tape up. Got a little bit of splatter here, as you can see. I'm gonna erase that off. A little bit right there too. Is it? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just patch up that line right there. Okay, looks good. Okay, uh, I explained this a little bit earlier that I used a Cricut Maker 3 to print these out. Um, Cricut Maker 3 comes with a program called Design Space. Um, these were just a stock image that was in there that I was able to just uh, place it in there and duplicate them and, and print out as many as I thought I needed. So it's pretty easy. It took me just a couple of minutes. Um, but my plan here is to, uh, all of this right here is going to be a blue. And then some of the stars are going to kind of just go up over and roll over these edges. So it's kind of going to make it look like it's, hopefully it's kind of like it's rolling with it. That's my hopes at least. Uh, so let's just go ahead. Are these placed in a certain way? Let me see. Okay. We'll go ahead and face them all upwards. Kinda, yeah, we'll do that. Let's see here. Okay. So I'm gonna come straight over right here. I'm just kinda guessing. It's gonna look fine.
And let's see what we have one right. Over right here. All right, that looks pretty good. Go and do the other side. Yeah, you could. You really could. Yeah, you could. Uh, you could cut them and then and then put them back together to make it look like it's folding. I feel like um, these right here, where it kind of folds up and it kind of comes down. I'm gonna go ahead and work with that and see. I think I like that. It's, it already looks like it's kind of folded. But yeah, you're right. We could cut it right there, shrink that down to kind of deform that star to make it look more like it's rolling. What's that? That one's dark. Oh my God. That one's a black wiener. You're going to like it. How cold is it? That last one was not cold. Ooh, I think that's why it wasn't good. This one looks like it has more stars. <laughs> it's okay. I don't know. Looks like a lot more if you ask me, but okay. That's all right. Uh, okay. Make sure those are stuck down. Someone asked, how long can you go when working on a project between coats? It all depends on, it depends on a lot of different things. There's a lot of factors that go into that. Um, yeah, what you're spraying it with, how much you're spraying down at one, at one time. Um, 
you know, because if you're using an airbrush, this is already instantly dry pretty much. If you're using a gun, it's not going to be. It's going to be stay really wet because it gets applied so fast and, you know, the guns just put out a lot more material. Um, I like I like working with an airbrush when I can because you're just saving you're saving a lot of paint doing it that way. Um, but uh, I would say if you're painting it with an airbrush, a couple of minutes. If you're painting it with a gun, could be up to 30 minutes. All depends on how you spray it. Someone said it would be it would be cool to see you paint a tumbler. Yeah, hey, actually did paint kind of a tumbler, right? Yeah, I might. I might paint a tumbler. I already have. Um, if you're looking for a tumbler being painted, I I did paint one though. Was it three weeks ago? Uh, the via back one. I think it's sitting right over there too, isn't it? Oh, right here. There we go. I painted this one two or three weeks ago, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, maybe. That's old news. We're onto a flag now. Okay. We got the center masked up. Looks good. We're going to mix up some blue candy. Shoot, I think I already have some blue candy mixed up. Let's see. Nope. Okay, I found one. This blue will work just fine. Someone asked if you've ever painted any bikes candy orange. Yes, I have. Uh, quite a bit, actually. Mostly been brown and gold. I think it's probably the most popular color. Colors, color combo. The root beer brown? Yeah. Yeah. It used to be blue and black, then red and black. All right, so I got some. So this is the candy blue concentrate. So anytime you get a, uh, if they call it a concentrate or a toner, or uh, yeah, candy concentrate, then you know that that needs to need to add uh, some inner coat clear or some binder or clear base coat, whatever you want to call it. You got to add because it's in concentrate form. You know, it makes sense like Kool Aid. You know. You got to put something else with it, whether it's water and sugar. Well, with this, we need to concentrate and we need binder and reducer. And then all the reducer is going to do is just make it sprayable. It's going to make it thin enough to be able to spray smooth out of either the airbrush or the uh, your paint gun, whatever you're going to use. Okay, so we got that. Somebody asked if these are lime line candy fillers uh they are but they're not they're not out yet still doing some testing and um some other stuff like that i've, I've tested a few manufacturers candies um not all that impressed with some of it this one's actually really good so so far so good and maybe in you know two three months we'll, we'll still, have a candy line still has to go through the process it's gotta, gotta be good, good. Now that'd be good. The one thing is, if I'm putting a candy, in, if the candy's put out by Limeline, it's going to be good. I'm not going to allow any inferior product. If it's not as good as House of Color, it's not going to be, you're not going to see it. At least not for me.
Somebody said any any um, last minute tips. They're going to try to do the foil tin foil embossing. Any uh, tips? Uh, yeah, tips on that would be try not to apply it to like round like rounded surfaces because it does take a whole lot of clear in order for that to uh, to build up. Uh, and I have talked to a few other people, and they have mentioned to me that they've used uh, some epoxy clear coat to speed up the process because literally you have to spray like 10 or 10, well, I would say about 20 coats total, but you're going to need like three or four sessions of, of clear. So you're going to need to clear it. You're going to need to let it dry, sand it down, clear it again, sand it down, fix up some errors, clear it again. Um, yeah, and, and it works, works a lot faster and a lot better if you're not doing it on curved areas, flat surfaces, it works better. And then someone said, how many candy colors will you be coming out with? Uh, probably 12. Then someone said, is that clear container just for mixing? Uh, this, yes, that's just for mixing. And it also comes with a brush that if you want to do it, use it as a touch up. But yeah, I use these to mix in all the time because it has the marble in it. Mix it in there, seals up, you can keep it stored for later. Those are from Limeline as well. Let's go ahead and clean out the. Um, then someone said, can you use candy in clear coat? Uh, the answer to that question is yes, you can use candy in clear coat, regular 2K clear coat. However, um, you need to be real careful with that because candies or clear coats, they take a while to dry, unlike um, regular clear base coat. So if you spray it really wet, it could run and you'd be able to see where it's ran. It, it, when it levels out, you, you could have a problem. If you plan on airbrushing it, don't use regular clear coat just don't do it i mean if you're doing a full complete maybe you can get away you I, in fact i know you could get away with doing it it's just a little more risky you know if you're new don't do it if you're new to clear coating don't do it just put it in clear base coat then if you plan on doing graphics don't do it any tape lines or anything like that it needs to be clear base coat it's just that's not meant Clear coat's going to build too much around your tape, build a thickness, and it's going to cause all kinds of problems. And it doesn't dry. You know, it doesn't dry until hours. So I guess someone said, what's that bigger bottle, bottle right there you have in your hand? Oh, the bigger bottle is reducer. Urethane okay. reducer. And then someone said, do you solely sell on Amazon or is there a website? Not much is on Amazon right now. Um, if you're here in the U S you should be able to find everything on Amazon. I don't think there's anything that's out of stock. Um, the, uh, you, you can also find, uh, most everything. If you just Google Limeline, we have two other, uh, websites where you can buy from Limeline paint supply.com and Limeline at big cartel.com too. Those are the two that you're able to to buy from if you're from canada you want to go to the limeline.bigcartel.com and buy there all right that blue looks really good all right let's go ahead and work we're, we're not going to hit this too hard just going to give it a a hint of blue As you can see, I'm kind of staying back about five to six inches. There's a piece of hair right there. Yeah, there. Five or six inches away to try to keep the pattern bigger. You don't want to get up all close and try to fill it all in because it's going to look uh, uneven. Somebody said, uh, let's see, 
how can I talk to you about some work I'm doing on a bike with all the graphics? Just hit you up on Instagram, right? Yeah. Oh, he's looking for advice or? Yeah. 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 If you're looking for advice, uh, hit me up on Instagram. Um, on any, if you have pictures to show me, if you're looking for me to do work, uh, I'm not really taking on any work at the moment. But like we said before, there's probably what well, we have 135 people on here on just the YouTube. So there's going to be two or three people that can probably do what you want if you're not wanting to try it yourself. I'm not sure if that was his question, but that'll answer it. Somebody else is asking that. Then someone said, is this Oriental Blue from House of Color? Uh, no, this is a uh, blue from Limeline that will be coming out. One of the ones we're sampling. And then someone said, I am from Canada. What's the company called again? I can't buy from the Amazon link. Um, so, yeah, you can just Google Limeline and you'll find the limeline.bigcartel.com. Um, but the Big Cartel website is the one you're going to want to be at if you're uh, wanting us to ship to Canada. You can also get uh, on in Canada, you can get some of the items on Amazon as well, as long as they're an, an FBA prime item, you'll be able, I'll be able to do those as well. But like somebody said, not everything's available if you're in Canada on Amazon. And then someone said, have you painted any tri-glides with metal flake and candy orange? Uh, tri glides? Yeah. yeah uh, a Harley? I guess it's a Harley. A Harley Davidson tri glide? Uh, no, I painted one blue. But no, I painted baggers. You can um, you can check out timewarpcustompaint.com, and a lot of my work you're gonna find there. In fact, you probably find like ten years of all my work on that website. So if you just go to timewarpcustompaint.com. Uh, or timewarpmc.com is the other one. You'll find my work there as well. So if you're looking for like references on what something's going to look like or trying to get ideas, you can go there and kind of see what I've done in the past. They want to know what your Instagram is too. Uh, Instagram, Time Warp Custom Paint. One wants to know what airbrush you're using. Uh, I'm using a Neo. And I water Neo. I'm gonna go ahead and kick on that fan real quick. Oh, that's not good. It's warm. <laughs> nah, it's lukewarm, man. It's not good. I don't drink my beer all warm. Ah, got a little bit of a drip there. It dripped a little bit right out of there. We're going to leave it alone. We're not even going to touch it. Okay, that's enough of that. Yeah, yeah, I know. What's happening is I got a little bit of a... Okay, so this is a good learning experience once again. So sometimes your nozzle gets clogged a little bit and what happens, it will create a back pressure up into here. And what it's doing is it's shooting it right out of this top breather hole. And it shot it right there and right there and right there. So yeah, when it bubbles up, it bubbles up and it creates pressure in there and it, psh, the fountain right over that. But uh, I'll figure out how to fix that. But 
luckily those other two hit right there where the masking is. I think the best way to fix that would be once that dries, I'll scrape that and then um, try to blend up a little more blue. But we'll let that kind of sit for a second. Someone said, someone asked, once you lay down the base coat, what do you use between your artwork? Inner coat clear or clear coat? I use regular clear coat in between rather than clear base coat. Clear base coat, I feel like it doesn't even really do anything. It doesn't really protect it. Um, you're just adding more layers of uh, uncatalyzed material that will build up and could cause you problems. Um, I'd rather just clear it. It's like when you clear it, you're saving everything. Um, if you have problems, you can erase it off like what we did when we had a splatter on this edge. I was able just to sand that off. And like, I think I have a little overspray spots here and there. I'm going to be able to take care of and address those as well, because there is a, a barrier of clear coat rather than clear base coat that we can kind of work with. Clear base coat is too delicate in order to, uh, to fix things like that. It, it does work and some people do it. I just feel like it's not as good. Take the removal blade again. Somebody asked, is there a specific reducer for your climate? He said, I know Createx has different ones, but that's water-based. Does climate matter for urethane reducer? Well, you know, I'm not a, really an expert with water-based. Um, I would say for sure that water-based would probably be more affected by humidity and other things like that because it is water-based. Um, but uh, really, you know, I, I don't know if I can really answer that question 100%, but uh, I can see that water base could have uh, more problems because of humidity, I guess. But the answer to a uh, reducer when it comes to uh, paints like this with the urethane reducer is, yeah, they usually do have a, a slow, medium, and fast reducer. Um, now... Everybody uses, you know, different stuff. Some people prefer to use slow. Um, I like to use fast. I, I really think that there's, it doesn't really matter a whole lot. Um, if it's really hot where you're at, say it's like you're in Arizona, you're going to want to use slow reducer because you're going to want, it's going to flash off so fast. Um, it could dry before it even hits the panel. You know, you still want it wetter than that. Uh, but if you're, but if you're in, uh, in cold conditions, then you would use a, uh, a fast reducer if you're kind of in between i would just stick with a fast reducer or medium i i think i use medium here all the time that's what the line line is someone said have you thought about doing a live in-person hands-on paint class i'd be there uh yeah we have kind of talked about that a little bit um whether it'll happen this next year or not i'm not sure One says, question, have you ever used vinyl stencils as masking? And if you have, does it require a different process than normal masking tape? Uh, this is a vinyl stencil. Is that what he's talking about? Use it for masking. Though. Oh, for masking. Um, I, ha I don't really use it for that reason, no. But you could use it for that. I don't feel like it's as good, though. You could lay it down and then trim it out. Uh. I feel like masking tape would still have its advantages over the vinyl. Yeah. Not so sure what I'm going to do here yet, but I know I need to at least pull that drip off now that it's dried. 
Heck, it's less noticeable now. But still a problem. Can't really tell now if you just glance at it. Yes, you <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't tell the customer. I can't see nothing. doesn't come across orange and it doesn't like it it doesn't look like it's orange to me now that you've got the blue next to it doesn't no i don't no i don't no the color is actually red orange it's pretty um, crazy but it doesn't look as orange for sure no maybe it's all the beer i drank but <laughs> i'm saying you're, you're uh, seeing, no those lines are straight ashley what are you talking john, about that's what john says too i don't know maybe he's had a few <laughs> beers i'm not sure what's happening here. oh you got yourself a drinking buddy wow yeah <laughs> I'll never see it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Let's put it on a real fast car, okay? Mm -hmm. drinking oh, really? Yeah. He's here? Oh. Oh. That's so nice. All right, looking good. Yeah, we'll pull that. All right, so now the magic's about to happen. We're gonna, I got a little bit of overspray here. Let's see if this will take it off. Someone said, any tips to know when it's time to grab a new sanding sponge? Uh, the sanding sponges work best when they're wet uh, because the uh, the sanding debris will kind of um, there's less clogging in the in the grit. Uh, but I don't know. I can usually get away with doing, you know, uh, all three tank and, and two fenders, scuffing them up with with one with one sponge. But yeah, definitely using them wet will. Uh, save the life of those a little bit just gonna kind of sh scraping away the red overspray that i have right here that one won't matter we're gonna put a little bit of a little bit of a shadow there okay there we go so this is the advantage of having clear coat um, over your base coat because you wouldn't be able to do this normally, you know, take a blade to it. <clears throat> okay, good enough. Like I said, this is just uh, a practice piece we're doing. We're just doing this so you guys can learn something. And, and I'm learning stuff too as I go. Because really, I haven't used this method with a tape. I've done it before with using a masking and cutting it out with a blade. I feel like this is probably better because you're not cutting on the surface. Um, but let's go ahead and I'm going to mix up a really... Um, we can go to one of two ways with this. We could uh, hit it with a purple uh, candy to make the, the fades here, which we'll probably do that. Or we could use a light gray or dark gray that's over reduced. We can do a few different things. Uh, not sure what I'm going to do yet, um, but I do want to put that stitching in to see if that works. Let's go ahead and grab my plate over here again. All right. I haven't done this for a long time, so I'm going to do it right down in this corner to make sure it looks all right before I do the whole thing. Okay, that's going to look fine. So I'm gonna take my blade here. This is a pretty cool effect. And you can only do this, like, like I said, if it's cleared. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scratch away. Some uh, stitch marks here.
Can you even see that? Oh yeah, you can see that on the camera, right? Yeah. Okay. And I would usually do both sides. I'm just gonna do one side. Save us a little bit on time. So you kinda you get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera down just a little bit closer. Blade's starting to dull out. Yeah. Or we can just use a regular razor blade too. I think that'll actually. Go ahead and finish it up with a regular razor blade. No, no, no. Uh, we'll see how this works. No, it works like crap. Ah, the bullet hole. What? What? I could actually. Uh, how would that work though? Like just a black bullet hole? Okay, that's what I'll do. Well, unless we got a better idea, we're gonna go with the bullet hole. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just go right down here a little bit. Okay. You get the point of that, right? Yeah. It's looking pretty good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're going there. Okay. Back at it. We're looking really good here. Okay. Bullet hole. Is that where we're at? Let's do it. That sounds good to me. Shouldn't be shooting a flag, but we'll take a piece of paper here. Nothing more American than guns. <laughs> You're right. Someone asked you what that tool is called. Um, it's just an exacto blade from Limeline. Okay. Uh, Turn this around. Let's, Let's go, go ahead, ahead and what does the bolt hole look like? Okay, right here. And then it kind of like, what does the bolt hole do? Do so I need to? You need a burn mark if you're going to do a bolt hole with it too. Okay. Well, we're throwing more stuff in the game, I guess. So I'm guessing this kind of come to a point. Is that what a bolt hole does? It comes to a point right there? Yeah, I think a bolt hole actually would just be like. I'm just go ahead and cut it. Exit or entrance. 
<laughs> You're asking me, a nurse. Depends on if it's exit or entrance. Oh, uh, yeah. What it looks like. Well, it's hitting a piece of metal, so. This is going to have to be... Here we go. So I'm just going to cut a circle as good as I can. It doesn't need to be perfect. I'm guessing, right? It's a bolt hole. Okay. There's the hole. And then I'm guessing, so that would penetrate through, and then I would need to, that would need to be darker, and then I would shadow around that. Yeah, I mean, the, the star thing, like, that's kind of like what I was doing here. Um, I feel like that was just a little too much. Let me see if I can. Yeah, really, I'd like to look at a picture. <laughs> but, yeah, that. Someone said Google it. Yeah. We'll go, you got something to Google it with, babe? I think I'm on the right track, though, here. Am I? Let's see. You got it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Dark in the middle. Okay. Okay. Um, let's try that again. Let me see that one more time. Okay. I think I got it. What were you looking at, Mel? One? No, I'm looking at the other one. This one? Yeah. This one? Yeah. Right here? Yeah, so we're going to cut out that. And then this is going to be kind of all. My problem is my memory of what stuff looks like i can't remember so i have to look at pictures okay that's better so it something starts like that. lighter and then dirt in the middle yeah so i'm gonna have to cut pretty much the uh cut this out someone says they have a stencil for, for bullet holes yeah i'm sure they do somebody does but you can make them out of paper just as easy you can literally print out a picture if you wanted to not draw it and you could just cut the stencil out of that Okay, let me go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. Okay. Booyah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I have some black, straight up some uh, black base coat here. Let me see that picture again, babe. Okay, so the, uh, okay, I know what I got to do here. Yeah, yeah. Recess those points, the bullet can't 
No, I got it now. Okay, I'm going to add some white and some black together with reducer. Yeah, that's what I'm about to do. Where did I put that thing? Uh, that little piece of paper. Yeah, Oh, look, I thought that was it. It's a drip. Um, hmm. hmm. Interesting. I do need that other piece of milk. It's that big. It's what I cut out of that. I know. Is it on the next <laughs> You know, watch the recording back over again and see. Is it on my butt? <laughs> Is it? There's tape on your butt. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, here it is. I found it. I found it. We do need that piece. Okay, so we got uh, some gray. And we're going to want to make this gray. Perfect. Let's set that there for just one second. I'm gonna need to tape this up a little bit so I don't have overspray. Someone says your Amazon link says page not found. Hmm. Uh, ask him where he's finding that link at maybe. Is it on in the description? All right, so I'm at, I got I got light gray in this. Huh, that looks like black, doesn't it? Yeah. It's okay. Let's see. That could have been lighter gray for sure. Yeah, but I think once we put the dark on there, it will, it'll look gray. So then we're going to take the, the other piece, just the circle. link in your description. Huh, I may have to take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and redo this bolt hole one more time. Needs to be a lot lighter gray around there. Okay, I think this will do it. Is that better? Yeah.
Ah, there we go. Now I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight in there. Little bit of white. Let's grab. Uh, let's see what we got. I lose that bolt hole. I probably don't need it. Oh. oh. All right, I got a little highlight right there. It's gonna look a little more realistic. We could do more work to that to make it look more real. We could have even gone a little bit lighter gray. We could even have maybe put a little bit of uh, you know, highlights around the inside of that. We could really go into detail with that if we wanted to. Uh, really not gonna do that. But that was, uh, that was a great idea of how to fix that. We probably could have put another one right here or something to even it out, but um, all in all, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and use that same uh, light gray that we had here, but I'm going to add um, some clear base coat to it to make it less potent. Okay. We can show you on a piece of white paper how thin this really is. Super thin, and then I have a lot of the clear base coat in there that what's going to make make it uh, you know really transparent because we want to be able to. To shadow this um, and just be really, really faint. Now, you could do a couple of things. We could run a, a tape line right here, um, which I think I might go ahead and do. Um, I, I want this to look good, so. I'm gonna take some quarter inch tape and I'm just gonna run it right along. A little bit of masking tape there to keep overspray off of that edge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this tape line.
you can see how much it takes to really to fade that down i think we got that good enough let's just kind of take a peek here oh yeah that looks really good you could even run a tape line right here that's really faint that would um look like the shadow is ending but we're not going to do that it's going to look fine just like we have it here let's put a little more shadow down here you see that on that red Ooh, I'm off a little bit. I should have brought that in right there. Ooh, it's okay. Little highlights there. No, no, uh, I don't want to go any darker. I'm okay. With that. But you can see where I kind of, um, I missed the lineup right here. I don't know why. I, I should have came right here and missed that a little bit. But um, those highlights are fine. This needs to, let me see what the quarter inch tape oh. I got it thank you so let me try to get this one right huh yeah I followed the wrong Oh, it did it right there again. Oh, no. A little splatter. There's the other bullet hole. Dang. I think we're done there. Let me clean this tip up a little bit. Yeah. That's like the one that's better, dang it. It's okay. And then I want to put a little bit of a light shadow just right where it rolls right there. And then maybe another one just right here where it kind of like loops in. You can kind of just... There we go. And then we will let's go ahead and shade these, these edges right here. See how that's kind of giving it a roll right there to make it look like it's waving. The key is really not to use black and not to do too much when it comes to shadowing. Just want to do just enough. That's almost in the same spot as, oh, the other one's right here. So yeah, um, before the video tomorrow, I'm not going to put you guys through painting another bullet hole. I'll paint that one um, before I uh, make the edited video. Clean that up a little bit.
All right. Let's get a closer look at this. Oh, besides the one little mistake there, like I said, we'll go ahead and do a bolt hole there or maybe something else. Probably a bolt hole. Make it match. But you can see here, we started with a uh, pearl white. Um, and once this gets clear coated again, all that pearl will come back. You'll be able to see that sparkle again. Um, so we did the pearl white. We taped off these two lines. Um, we used 16th inch fine line to create the uh, the flag pattern. And the way I found that was I just printed off online a picture of a waving flag. And I kind of used this as reference. You can see I kind of used... You can see that one is this one right here. You know, not exact, but, um, uh, you know, something similar. Um, There's a little bit of an error. I could have put that drop shadow this way a little bit more. Would have made it look better. Um, that's fine. Uh, not too worried about that. We did, we did scratch away the stitch marks. We were able to do that because the, clear, the base coat was clear coated with regular clear coat. So it has a barrier of clear coat. So we're able to scratch away. Um, so that way we're not scratching through that clear coat into the base color. Because if that was just base coated, we wouldn't be able to use that method of, of making these these marks. There's other ways to do it. You could use a Stabilo, white Stabilo pencil and you can draw them in. It'll look just as good. Um, but yeah, we did that. We made the mistake of the drip right here. So we put a bullet hole. Um, we laid down the stars that I printed off the uh, Cricut 3 Cricut Maker. Um, which comes with the Des design space program, which already has these stars already logged in. So all you have to do is pretty much copy and paste them uh, right into your um, right into your cutter there, and then they're ready to cut. Um, and we did a little bit of drop shadows. We pulled our tape, and voila, that's it. Not too hard. Pretty happy with the way it came out. Once it's clear coated, like I said, it's really going to show the. Um, the sparkle and the uh, the depth there but you can see even that you see that little drop shadow i have right there it just gives it that little roll someone has a question they said when applying the final clear coats is there a maximum num maximum number of coats to get the best finish most clear coats say two to three coats um i say always th three coats uh, I don't see how you get away with two coats, especially with custom paint. You're um, going to want, when, when it comes to custom paint, you're going to want to be a little easier when it comes to uh, clearing your your first, doing your first coat, like fresh over. Say I was going to get ready to clear this. You're not going to want to drown it with clear coat on the first coat. You're going to want to apply a really like what they call a tack coat. That way it's just, it goes on there light and it kind of just tacks up. That way it kind of builds up a little bit of a barrier over those candies. So when you do hit it hard, um, it's those candies are going to be uh, protect more protected from like moving around and shifting around. Because when you're laying a really wet clear coats on top of this, it's going to want to suck that candy paint up into that clear coat. And that clear coats kind of, you know, flattening out. It's, it's, it's just kind of the nature of clear coat. Once you spray it, it kind of flattens out. What happens is those could those candies could run and they'll shift all over the place and you'll have like uh your you'll have like the blue in your star you'll have the red and it'll be a mess so when it comes to custom paint i would say five to six coats because those couple of coats you do at first are going to be uh pretty thin and pretty light that way we can build that up um there is like a maximum like you can't really put 10 coats at one time there's like a certain amount of coats that you can put on it in one session, which I would say four to five coats, uh, maybe six would be max, depending on how heavy you're laying it down. Then after that, there's just so much build that um, it's better off to let that dry, sand it down. Usually at, at that point, you would fix your errors um, and then you would put it back into clear coat. So like right now, I could put this into clear coat, um, be all good with it, still have that little error there, and then I could address that on the next coat. Um, in between those layers so clear coat address that clear coat again and i could also take care of you know any other problems i have if there's if this is a customer's paint job um, so not everything needs to be done in one layer and, and usually when it comes to complex custom paint jobs like this they're never done in one layer they're always done in multiple clear coat sessions um clear coated and sanded and you know there's nothing wrong with that you know like i said clear coat this 
we could do a whole nother layer of flames over the top of this if we wanted to. We could do purple flames over this if we wanted to. We could do uh, we could do purple flames that are kind of transparent in the middle, so you still see all the flame, all the flag, and everything. There's a lot of stuff you can do. You can just, you know, a lot of people say with airbrushing is all about layering. Layering it really is, but sometimes you just have to put a coat of clear coat in between that um, to, you know, be able to get rid of your paint edges and stuff like that. Um, and it's not, it's not, um, unusual for custom paint jobs to have, you know, three to four sessions of clear coat in the booth. So not three or four coats of clear, three or four sessions of three or four coats of clear. If that makes sense. So you can get into like 12, 15 coats of clear when you're all said and done, but sometimes that's just what it takes. But I think that's it. How, how long we go on this one? Two hours? Wow. Okay. Well, we're meeting our two-hour deadline. So uh, I think that's it. Um, if anybody has anything else last second, we'll help you with. If not, we will see you next Thursday. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Forget that. See you next year. See you next year. <laughs>